part two of the Twits. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr Twit decided he'd put a frog in Mrs Twit's bed. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, Mrs Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed. Mr Twit slipped the frog between her sheets and he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put on the light. Put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itchy. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then all at once she felt something cold and slimy crawling over her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you? Mr Twit said. Help! Screamed Mrs Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed. Oh, base that giant skilly wiggler. I saw her on the floor just now, Mr Twit said. That one? Screamed Mrs Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. Help! Cried Mrs Twit. Save me, it's all over my feet. It'll bite your toes off, said Mr Twit. Mrs Twit fainted. Mr Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to go get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs Twit came to, the frog had just jumped onto her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly, it's a giant skilly wiggler. Mr Twit said. You know, bite off your nose. Mrs Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the night on the sofa. The frog went to sleep on her pillow. <coughs> the wormy spaghetti. The next day, to pay Mr Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big long ones and put them in a tin and carried the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr Twit, poking around in it with his fork. It's a new kind. Mrs Twit said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato-covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs Twit said. She was watching him from under the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it a bit bitter, Mr Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Try the other kind next time. Mrs Twit waited until Mr Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was squishy? Mr Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with the corner of the tablecloth. Why? he said. And um, why it had a nasty bit of taste? Why? he said. Because it was worms, cried Mrs Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. funny walking stick. To pay Mrs Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to the work shed. There he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small the next morning Mrs Twit didn't notice it at all. The following night, Mr Twit stuck on another tiny bit of wood. Every night, he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He 
He did it very neatly so that the extra bits looked like a part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh, very gradually, Mrs Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now when something is growing very slowly, it's almost impossible to notice it happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by, but you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs Twit's walking stick. It was all so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, Mrs Twit said, looking at the stick. I've had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. There's something wrong with you, all right, Mr Twit said beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened? Mrs Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. I suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth happened? cried Mrs Twit. It's not the stick, it's you, said Mr Twit, grinning horribly. It's you getting that shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr Twit. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks, that's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs Twit began to feel so trembly, she had to sit down. And I'll see you next time for chapter three.